If you only have space for a little tower cooler, you can get big performance if you spend big. But what if your budget is little too? Well, you could start by taking a look at these two budget 92 millimeter tower coolers. Welcome to Machines and More. There's a pretty good reason you might want to run a 92 millimeter cooler. In particular, if you're height constrained, such as in the N-Case M1, or if you want a healthy amount of clearance between your side panel and your cooler, such as if you want to run the RAD or HDD panel on your NR200, and you can't fit a full 120 millimeter tower without modding that RAD panel. Now, typically speaking, a 92 millimeter tower is great for something like an Intel Core i5 or Ryzen 5 level of TDP, and with higher fan speeds, it's also acceptable for the next level up too. Now in this category, I like the Noctua U9S, but there's no question it's a bit spendy for a little air cooler and you could pick up a U12S for as much and that is going to be a bit better since it's a 120 millimeter tower if you have space though. But two budget options are here and a big thanks for ID Cooling and Be Quiet for sending these by for review. So let's take a quick look at what these things are capable of and how they stack up against the U9S. So first off, we have the new Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim 2. This is a pretty lightweight heatsink at only 300 grams, give or take. And this one features a very, very bare bones mounting solution. For AM4, you can just use the stock backplate and the cooler clips that are provided. And for Intel, you have a mounting mechanism similar to what's used on the stock Intel coolers, like the ones that come with the 10400 and 11400 level of uh, CPU. So they just pop into the motherboard. Now, even though there's no screws involved, it's still a little finicky for this uh, Intel option. And you do really want to make sure that the tabs are fully engaged to lock the cooler in place against your motherboard. You get three shiny copper heat pipes. This one is actually kind of tall. I measured it at 136 millimeters. It's spec at 135, so it is a bit on the tall side compared to the other 92 millimeter towers. And you'll notice that's because of the extra space between the direct contact uh, base plate and the bottom of the heat fins. Now pre-applied thermal paste, I left the contact patch to give you an idea of the size of the base plate in relation to the Intel IHS. You get one 92 millimeter Pure Wings 2 fan, which is incredibly quiet at identical RPMs. And just for reference, the Noctua's NFA9 fans get to 1850 or so at three decibels above the noise floor. And these can go up to the max, which is around 2000 RPM. This one in particular hit 2100 or so RPM at that noise level. Of course, it is a different fan design, but still it is impressive nonetheless. And this one is capped off with a metal cover plate but otherwise it is a very basic cooler. I have another basic cooler here. I know that it is a basic cooler because it's called the ID Cooling SE914 XT Basic. A little more heft to the heatsink at 448 grams. So about 50% more mass than the Be Quiet one. And you get an extra heat pipe. This one has four. You have support for AM4, LGA115X pattern, and also 20XX as well. 125 millimeters tall, so good compatibility. The U9S is also the same height. Now this mounting mechanism is much more robust on this one. You either use the included Intel backplate and secure these mounting bars down, or you use your motherboard's AM4 backplate and screw on bars similarly with spacers in between. Included is a tube of ID's TG25 paste, one ID cooling 92 millimeter fan, the ID 9225M12S, which goes up to about 2300 RPM actually, a pretty fast one. You get an extra set of fan clips for a push-pull orientation if you can remember the model name of the fan. Uh, both of these uh, and the U9S are all asymmetrical, so RAM compatibility typically isn't an issue. And as a reference point, the U9S does top both these coolers with 520 grams of heatsink mass and five heat pipes in total. The A9 fan does go up to about 2000 RPM. Now, depending on retail availability, the Be Quiet has a 2590 MSRP and the 914 XT is supposed to be around 25 US dollars compared to the $50 U9S and the $60 U9S in Chromax. To test these coolers, 
I threw it into my end case M1, which is running a 10700K. And I think this style of case or something like the Slyker S610 might be a typical home for a 92 millimeter tower. I tested at a noise normalized total system level of three decibels above the noise floor from 20 centimeters away. And that is 100% for the Be Quiet fan at 2100 RPM and 75% for the ID cooling unit at 1800 RPM. And for the U9S, that is 95% at 1850 RPM. And I also tested with the fan at 100%, and I'll just give you the difference in the noise levels. Now for the 10700K, I did lock voltage to 1.15 volts for an all-core clock speed of 4.7 gigahertz. And that's what you can typically expect with the CPU on stock settings and realistic for this level of cooling. So jumping into the noise normalized results, unfortunately the higher fan speed of the Be Quiet unit isn't enough to compensate for the lower spec heat sink. And we're already in the 90s here, not quite thermal throttle levels yet, but there's very little buffer here for increased ambient room temps or a less finely tuned voltage level. The ID cooling unit on the other hand is quite good. Low 80s here, topping out at about 84 degrees and a better spec heatsink clearly matters. The U9S Chromax tops out at 80 and a half degrees. Switching over to 100% fan speeds, the Be Quiet was already maxed out, so that is going to stay the same graph, but the ID cooling still has a bit more to give. A three degree improvement is there, almost catching the U9S with its fans maxed out at 2300 RPM, but this fan is super loud at eight decibels over the noise floor. And by contrast, the U9S only has 5% more left. Not a whole lot more, but the noise profile doesn't change much either. It's about 0.5 decibels louder. For a quick listen, here are the noise levels of the coolers first at the noise normalized level, and then 100% recorded with a microphone placed at 10 centimeters away. All right, so you've seen the results and I'll just share a few quick thoughts on each one. The Be Quiet cooler is competent, but there's no arguing that the performance is inferior to the ID cooling unit. It's a bit odd at one centimeter taller, plus it has a very basic mounting mechanism. And it's not a bad cooler, just very bare bones with the lightweight construction and only three heat pipes. I think this would be a good replacement for a stock Intel cooler, but I wouldn't run this on anything more than a 10400 or 11400 level of CPU. There's just not enough cushion there. One other thing I noticed with this uh, was that the fan clips are super annoying. There's just this tiny little sliver that sits in the fan mounting hole as opposed to a normal clip like on the ID cooling one. So this fan clip barely stays into the fan. It'll just uh, pull out super easy. So not very convenient. So it might take a few tries um, if you're mounting it up in a case versus outside of it. The ID Cooling 914 XT impressed me a lot. The way to frame this one is that it either runs about three to four degrees hotter than the U9S with the 10700K for only about 50% of the cost of the non-Chromax U9S, or you could also say that the performance is comparable, but with a noise penalty of about four decibels. Now, whether or not that extra three to four degrees of performance or the four decibels is worth it, is completely a personal choice, but I think it is hard to argue that the 914 XT represents a really, really great value. Plus, it's less on paper than the Be Quiet. You might be curious how much push-pull matters for this level of tower cooler, and since I only have two identical fans for the U9S, I just ran a quick test to illustrate the benefit that you can get from that. And with an extra fan running at 100%, you're getting a boost of six degrees better for only a noise penalty of two decibels. And now you could also throttle the fans back a bit and still get better performance at the same noise level too. So for either of these coolers, I think an extra fan is a good idea if you want a to run a hotter CPU. Um, the ID cooling does come with the extra fan clips to do that and you just need to source another fan. And I do think the 914 is absolutely fine for the 10700K as long as you're willing to put up with the extra noise. And if you can get another one of these fans, you will see some pretty good performance even with an eight core chip like that. Now, I like the U9S, but man, this 914XT is an incredible little machine with a little price tag. So I hope you found this info helpful. Please give a thumbs up if so, and I 
left some product links down below for all the coolers tested and some of the components down there for your reference. And subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching today.